this disease is very famous. A few points regarding the effects of this disease. It is caused by a pathogen called a Arwenia amylovera. And uh, this is a bacterial disease. So if you apply any fungicide related uh, chemical or sometimes a uh, horticulture uh, oil, neem oil, it won't work because this is a, a bacterial pathogen and it transmitted in the uh, vascular system in the plant. So it has a really wide host range, including the apple and the pear and several uh, rosaceous uh, ornamentals. I read through the uh, Washington State University uh, Extension website, it actually can affect over 200 uh, species. If you forget everything I, I'm going to talk about today, just remember two key words. One is scotching, because uh, when this disease infects the plant, it causes really dramatic uh, leaf symptoms. Looks like twigs have been burned. The second word is called shepherd crook. So these twigs, which are infected by this bacteria, can uh, decline very rapidly. And uh, uh, like I'm showing in this photo, uh, the stem uh, next to the uh, the leaves can start in curling, um, making it look like a shepherd crook. So those are two words you need to remember to differentiate fire blood and other uh, diseases of apple and pear. Let's talk about history. Uh, this pathogen is native uh, in East, Eastern North America. First, it is also the first bacterium uh, proven to be a pathogen of plants. I found a really old bulletin showing some preventable disease or treatment and uh, uh, it was uh, first reported in New York in 1780 and in and 1887 in California. So it's marvel to me that uh, this disease had been detected so long time ago and still very significant uh, for the current uh, all the orchard industry. So let's look at the symptoms. Uh, let's start with the flower. So when this disease infects the plant, it will cause the flower to turn to be water soaking, uh, drooping and uh, shivering, turning brown and all black. And uh, something interesting that uh, the flower will remain attached through the uh, the growing season. So it will not cause defoliation or flower dropping. If you look closer to the symptoms, you actually can see those uh, uh, kind of like a uh, milky uh, substance like honey dew uh, on the side of the blossom or the flower. And uh, there are actually massive uh, numbers of bacteria cell. Uh, during the really rainy and humid days, those bacteria are going to ooze out. And uh, somehow the pollinator, including the butterfly, flies, or uh, bees, they're attracted to those honey do look like a substance and they will help to transmit the disease a tree to tree or twig to twig. I will talk about that uh, during uh, in the following slide when we talk about the disease cycle. So that's flower symptoms. Let's look at leaf and the shoot symptoms. I would say it's a little bit difficult to see the early symptom of fire blight. Here is one example. The leaves will show blackening along the middle rib or vein before become fully necrotic. And uh, the whole leaf will uh, will wilt, will become uh, brown, and they're still uh, attached to the uh, stem. And uh, again, uh, no leaf dropping into very late in the season. And the shoot tip, like I mentioned, they wilt very fast and they will form uh, like a, a shepherd crook. The whole plant, if you look at the entire canopy, it will look like some branches have been burned. Uh, here, I want you to pay attention to the difference between fire blight and phytophthora. Phytophthora is a root rot disease and it can cause a whole canopy um, wilting and the leaves will be still attached to the, uh, to the branch or twigs, uh, but the whole plant will look like flagging. However, for fire blight, if you look at the entire canopy, uh, most commonly, you will see patches of dead or browning uh, twigs, and they are more sporadic, sometimes sectional, and uh, 
unless it is very severe infection, I don't expect to see the whole canopy turn to be wilting or browning uh, in a short period of time. So that's a difference between fire blight and uh, Phytophthora. Uh, for the fruit symptoms, most uh, fruits will uh, start developing once they get uh, fully infected by the bacteria. Uh, but for some fruits, you uh, during the raining days, you can see the uh, bacteria oozing out from the fruits. And uh, uh, some of the fruit will just stop developing. They turn dark, uh, shriveled into a mummy, and they still remain uh, attached to the branch for several months, And uh, which definitely different with the mature, healthy uh, fruits. Uh, they, uh, normally, they are too heavy due to the size. Sometimes they can drop on the ground. How would they survive uh, the, the cold winter um, in the Middle West? So they will cause the black and gray cankers and all the bacteria cell will reside under the bark. If you use a knife to chop off the bark, you can see the red and reddish flecking close to the canker. That's an indication of the bacteria infection. However, in the winter, like everything else, bacteria will remain dormant and they're waiting for the spring, which leads to the disease cycle of this, um, uh, of this pathogen. So special thanks to, to, to Ms. Tatiana uh, Dubon from the Washington State University Extension. She has such a beautiful drawing of the disease cycle of fire blight. So in the winter, all the bacteria will, will survive on the canker. And in the spring with continuous uh, rainfall and a humid weather, the bacteria are gonna start oozing out. I'm not sure whether you can see the small little yellow dew out there. And those dew, which is the bacteria oozing, gonna attract the pollinator to fly to the canker and they're gonna carry the bacteria cell to the uh, flowers where the uh, the bacteria are gonna first infect the plants. And then um, the bacteria are gonna transmit it from the flowers to uh, the nectar and then to the uh, to the leaves, then to the stem, causing symptoms of both flower leaves and also the, the stem. So over time, uh, they will continue this cycle and cause more problems, especially during the raining days or a uh, thunderstorm, heavy wind, those bacteria cell can be also transmitted by wind or rain flash from different parts of plants, uh, either within the plants or across different plants in the same property. That's how they transmit it and uh, survive. Uh, and last, I'd uh, like to talk about the disease management. Uh, planting resistant rootstock uh, will be the most ideal method in controlling this disease. And uh, you may need to uh, check online in Missouri to see which uh, variety are most resistant to this disease. Some people may want to do some sanitation in the winter. Once the uh, leaves are all gone, uh, they want, you will need to uh, focus on the canker area. And uh, once you look at a canker, you need to measure around 8 to 12 inches below the canker and make the cut. Uh, after that, uh, you may want to do a late dormant copper uh, applications, and uh, that can help uh, help the plant to have some preventative approaches to um, to fend themselves uh, to get ready for the uh, new year new season. Um, as for the sanitation in the sum summer, if you see many symptoms showing up from your tree, you need to do a timely cutting of the infected material. Uh, you may want to scout your tree. Not every day, at least every week, as long as you see any um, infected um, uh, infected branches, you need to remove the uh, branches 12 inches below uh, the infected tissue. Uh, remember to sanitize the pruning tools uh, with 10% bleach. Um, for the chemical, uh, there are some recommendations. Uh, uh, Copper-based pesticide and antibiotic-based um, uh, pesticide are very effective for this disease. If you want to go organic, uh, there are some biological control uh, by bacillus uh, species. So uh, those uh, approaches are only applied to uh, some uh, uh, commercial orchard owner, but sometimes uh, the homeowner can still get access to those chemicals. And uh, I would say those disease severity may vary from year to year. Like this year, we have a really wet spring. 
And in the past two years, I didn't receive so many calls or samples regarding this disease. So if you don't have this problem for consecutive year, I would say just uh, it's okay. Just let it be as long as you, you do a good sanitation, both winter and summer, there's no need to apply any chemical. And uh, some copper application may be suggested. If you have really have infection this year, you want to do that late in the season.